Yo, what's going on everyone? It's Brian and Jim here with Drink a Beer and Play a Game and welcome to another episode of the Power Hour. Ah, how you doing everybody? Now we were on, uh, I guess a hiatus is a weird way to call it because we were pretty consistent and then between just early summer plans, going to game cons, which we'll talk about in a minute, and just general life. Yeah, life is busy. Yeah, but we got a lot of topics to cover today. Uh, before we get started, uh, we're going to be going through two stouts, and these are ones I've had. They're goddamn delicious, and I wish I actually had more of this one, um, but it's just one can. This is actually from the 18th Street Brewery in Indianapolis, and it's called Hunter. It is... I just want... I don't want to give any impressions before Jim tries it. Unfortunately, you probably can't see the can great, but it's one of the coolest designs. I mean... That's actually really cool, because when I think Indianapolis, I think of Samurais. Yeah. So, it's... All their beers are very unique like this. Um, have some of the best label work I've seen. So, yeah. I just can't wait for Jim to try that. And then later, we're going to try out the High Water Brewings Campfire Stout. Never Ooh. had this. Uh, one of my buddies got it for me, and... Oh, so it could be crap. Actually, I think you got it for me. Did I? <laughs> it's probably sure. crap. Then. Actually, it, it leaves you wanting s'more. Oh, <laughs> it's got a good tagline. Oh, and there's a lot of text there's, over there's there. There's a lot of writing, and I'll get to it. Don't worry, Jim. I'll take your bit for yeah, tonight. You can have it. So, uh, <clears throat> Jim, why don't you hit us off with... Uh, that is black. Oh, yeah. Don't be racist. It looks like tar. <laughs> All right. Give me yours. All right. Um, before we jump into... Our talk about the game con that we were mentioning. Let's first go through our Patreon questions. Yeah, we owe uh, we owed our patrons uh, because before the last podcast we did, I had actually forgotten. No, 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 no. I f- forgot to bring up the questions during the podcast. You fucked up. I did fuck up. It's yeah. it's me. That's so to make it up to everyone, I posted on there about hey, you guys get two questions for this one. So not everyone who could post the questions, but we did get two from two of our good buddies, Dean and from Astral. So. Dean, Game Whisperer, starts it off with, Hi, Jim and Brian. Hey, Brian, you know how you're always bad-mouthing the good old ZX Spectrum? Well, I figured two-question trade... Wait, hold on. I also can't read. Well, I figured the two-question trade for one gentle challenge should just change your perspective. Challenge is to have a few goes on Jetpack. Here's a link so you can go ahead and play. You need to figure out keys. It's left and right fire up. Hope you enjoy. Please let me know if you've changed your thoughts. Would be great if Brian knocked your ass with the score as usual. Enjoy, Dean. <laughs> well, thank you, Dean. You, I, I'm glad you at least admit that Jim can't compete in scores in gaming in general. There's like four games that I probably can't ever beat him at. Outside of that, I'm gonna jetpack the fuck out of you. That's what I'm gonna do. Um, interestingly enough, it's I, on Rare Replay. Yeah, I've yeah. played and actually enjoy the jetpack game. Just. On that, because who wants to play the ZX? But yes, I will gladly post. I will record on the link that you sent, um, and I'll show the. I actually might have footage from when I recorded way back in the day, because we're gonna do the rare replay in the future. Yeah, I was going through all the games. Um, I'll take around with it too. That one is an interesting one because the control was a little goofy for me, but once you get used to it, it's fairly fun. But I'll I'll just record. Uh, from the link, and you'll get my first initial reaction. There'll be no practicing, just whatever happens. Yeah, I'll, I'll do better than Jim. <laughs> Good, grand, wonderful. Thanks, Dean. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Jim Good guy. Sucks. Great guy. <laughs> All right, and from Astral, question one. Which is Simon Belmont's favorite beer, and why? Hmm. Simon... <laughs> I would go with Vampire Killer from Clown Shoes. It seems like a very appropriate, and I think that beer was actually inspired by that. Unfortunately, I think unless people still carry old stock, it it changed over to like Undead Party Killer or something. But Vampire Killer was the classic dude killing a vampire. Um, If memory serves me correctly, it was a stout and a really awesome cover. I think we've actually talked about it on here before. But, yeah, no doubt. I think we did talk about it. I think it was in your uh, the bracket. Yeah. So that would easily be his favorite beer. Probably. I would say there's got to be a beer out there called, like, Holy Water or something like that. So Jim, just don't say Keystone. I, mean, I was going to think about actually saying that just to piss you off. But <laughs> I'll go with yours, too. Vampire Killer. Yeah. Nice. I like that question. 
And question number two. What are your thoughts on the live-action movie for Akira? Will it suck or will it be faithful to the source material? So, if I dip into my vast knowledge of anime, I'm going to say it's going to suck like all anime movies. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I actually don't Bitch. know what that is. So, this is clearly a gym thing. I will say... Right, here's, here's the closest thing you'll know to what Akira kind of eventually turns into. Okay. Think the Trapper Keeper episode of South Park and the big blob that he becomes by the end. Okay. They ripped that from Akira. Okay. Um, a live action. Well, the question is, has there ever been a li- good live action version of anime? And I don't know if you saw it, Jim, but put controversy aside. Did you see Ghost in the Shell? No. Okay. I did not watch that anime, and the movie was just – it was a popcorn action movie. It was fine. Yeah, I'm trying to think of, like, anime movies that I've seen. Like, Dragon Ball Evolution was hot garbage. Uh, God, I remember your friend bringing that. Uh, well, they didn't bring it. It was just on the TV. And they were obsessed with it. <laughs> um, what other ones have I seen? I mean, uh, I can't really think of any, to be honest with you. For anime? That I've seen. Yeah, I I don't know. But now I'm kind of interested in this if it's how Jim describes. So. Yeah, I mean, that's like the bare bone. I mean, it carries out there, so. It's one of those all timers though, and I think I saw it like fucking fifteen years ago, so I'm not as familiar with it. But it'll probably suck. Yeah, I d- like you're gonna have to, like the anime is kind of really popular despite itself because the story's kind of a mess, but it's just like such a spectacle too. Yeah. So maybe if you just focus in on one part of the actual manga and you just focus on like a concise story, maybe that'll be better. And th- and this is the toughest thing we've talked about this with comics, with video games, with whatever the source material is. It sucks because, on one hand, you can be way too literal, and we've said this many times, Jim hates, that's why he hates the Watchmen movie, or you go completely out of left field, like the Resident Evil movies, make it its own thing, and just throw in little bits and pieces, which the first movie I've said on here, I liked, the second one was okay, the rest are throwaway, but entertaining. Yeah, they're at least fun. They're dumb. So it's like, what are you trying to do? You're just trying to make your quick buck or are you trying to delve into that you know that backstory and really go wide with it so i guess that's what it really depends on yeah i think i care more about the live action cowboy bebop than i do a care but I, you're, you're killing me jim it's good shit you're good show me. you're killing me right grow up with adult swim in your mid-teens like everyone else did who's a, somewhat of a weeb now but kind of got out of it after they got stopped watching that stuff jim what do you think i was doing while you were watching those at night I don't know, probably probably having, like, sex or something. <laughs> Some overrated shit. <laughs> probably with a girl. <laughs> what, what do you mean you weren't smoking weed, eating Pop-Tarts, and watching anime at 2 in the morning? <laughs> what do you mean, Brian? Jim, we all, some heroes don't wear capes. Yes, don't you hear me, <laughs> son of a bitch. Now you don't have culture like I do. <laughs> You're right, I missed out, I guess. If only you're as worldly as I am. <laughs> oh, God damn it. I do like that question. I'm sorry we're not better experts at anime, but that any questions about anime, Jim will probably have to handle in the future. Yeesh. <laughs> oh, we're in trouble then. Was that the last for the Patreon? Yeah, that was the last one. As always, guys, we really appreciate. Uh, feel free. Just You don't even have to wait for Jim. If you have questions, mm-hmm. send it. We'll backlog them. Make sure we always get to them. Yeah, just send them anyway because I'm – kind of crappy about hey there's podcasts coming up morning of hey questions guys wait are you saying you're crappy with prep and following up on things Uh, sometimes sometimes (laughs) debatable (laughs) things are debatable here jim where's your energy seems low yeah he's always low i'm a beaten tired man right now (laughs) oh christ all right we'll save this next topic for a little bit later because i want you to build up your energy for it All right, so going through some beer topics, the first is, and I love this title. Spirit animal right here. A pig steals beer from campers, gets drunk, starts fight with a cow. This comes to us from the independent.co.uk, and I love the little subtitle. Belligerent porker went on bender after drinking three six-packs of beer. Brian, you're talking about heroes and capes? Uh. And actually, this is apparently a story from 2013. So. Yeah, but it's another one more people need to hear about because it's just ridiculous. It, it comes to us from Australia, 
And because of course it know, does. Yeah, if you know about Australia, you know their wildlife situation is a little rough. But for a beer to drink that much, now here's the deal: was the pig? I'm just going to keep calling it a pig instead of a boar or whatever. But was the pig? How did they know it was drunk, or was it just acting like a pig and going crazy? Well, I, from what because I originally read this on uh, off like the BL.com, whatever the hell that is. Yeah. And I think it was along the lines of like the pig can in, it snuck all their stuff, and like they could just tell with like the way it was like kind of like moving around and stuff like that. And then they eventually came across it starting a fight with a cow, because of course he would. How the fuck does a pig fight a cow? <laughs> Probably very sexually, Brian. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, is he like nibbling at his ankles? Cow's like, get the fuck off me. Like, what do you like what does a pig do to a cow? Yeah, and how does it does a cow really fight back or does it just kind of it just looks at it, it's like the fuck you doing? Does like, it just look down, just goes, Oh fuck my oh, oh, this is happening. Like now. it could go for a lazy kick, like, get off. Yeah, stop <laughs> it. <laughs> and if and if I think I'm remembering the story that I read right, it ended somewhat tragically, but also, as you would expect, with the pig drunkenly walking into traffic and getting hit by a car. Yep. Yeah, they saw. Uh, yeah. So, moral of the story: If you're in Australia, your beer could be drank by a pig. And that's a pig that knew what it wanted out of life. I think it went out happy. I mean, yeah, man. But what else is the pig gonna do? Get eaten. Exactly. There you go. <laughs> Australia, I choose love your own you path. and uh, keep giving us good stories like that. There's not enough. All right. So the next one comes to us from our buddy Todd, a.k.a. Snarcast. And uh, Seattle Brewery is getting backlash over their Crips and Bloods related beer. I wonder why. I I mean, is that not in good taste? No. I mean, does the beer actually taste good? So this comes comes to us. Just all the labels. And once again... Link is below, but if you're watching the segment, because this needs to be its own segment, you'll see the photo below uh, from Mirage Brewery. The snitch is called Snitch Blood, and the uh, Crips is Where Are You From? It has the bandanas for the actual colors, and then really over the top. That font looks vaguely like, is that almost like, uh, oh, fuck. Something from the 90s is like stuck in my head. Well, I think of, did you, did you ever see the movie The Stuff? No. Okay. Well, that has very similar font. I would almost put it on the same as uh No, it's not like high C. But it's a very goofy writing. It definitely looks like something you would see on like candy. Yeah. From but, the time. But this is uh their IPAs and Oh, let's see. The company was quick to hit hit the delete button. Issuing a, well, according so to this, this a groveling their, apology. Well, this was their offensive advertising. Fuck all the politeness. People have died over that shit. You're trying to use it to be down and cool. Sick. Beer culture, a marketing brand highlighting merger between beer and urban culture, wrote in response to the announcement. Okay, so that was someone responding back to them. Um, yeah, so at the end of the day. Yeah, this is just a lot of uh, angry comments that they got. Somehow. People still <laughs> sheltered motherfuckers. Another chimed in. People still die over colors. Won't ever get my support. I think the best way to support is to take what you would spend on a pack of these and just give it direct to the foundation. Yeah, and I don't know what foundation. I'm sure it's a foundation that helps people. <laughs> Inner city kids who are the victims of uh, yeah. gang violence, probably. So this is an obvious beverage brand ounce water faced similar backlash earlier this year after it tried selling its spring water in 40 ounces 40 ounce bottles kind of like colt 45 and stuff right what do you think the chances are that black people do not own this company um i would say extremely high and i would also say uh, if i could play devil's advocate for one second look i want to i want to pack of this beer right now i want to try it all i'm saying is Yes, it's an obvious what the fuck are you doing moment for this company. Like, you really, like, went went for it. But, like, haven't movies, shows, and plenty of other things kind of capitalized on Bloods and Crips? And, I mean, isn't GTA 5 or GTA... San Andreas? Yeah, like, the whole thing about, like... People love San Andreas. Maybe exactly. they love this beer. That I'm just saying if it's a good beer and you want to have a unique thing, I guess that's a good way. But yeah, maybe use your profits for the for the foundation, but keep selling the beer if it's good. 
if it's shitty beer. Well, obviously, that would be the true crime here. <laughs> yeah. So, at the end of the day, uh, people doing stupid people shit. Yeah, I'm just – I'm trying to think if I can remember any other beer companies that went slightly in what some could consider bad taste. I think that should be an ongoing topic. We should try and find them because I, I am sure – there's been <laughs> see how see how far that uh, bar how low that bar can be set yeah I think I think craft beer is starting to reach that at breaking that, point right there getting yeah, close more and more and we've talked about this people are running out of ideas too much with mergers people are gonna do some crazy shit to be like we need sales our IPA isn't just enough we need a ca- catchy name um, <laughs> we need an attention getter what what are the kids these days like I know gang violence <laughs> yeah. I'm sure I can't imagine that's the first asshole to do that though, so I can't wait to see. Yeah. Now I'm gonna look into it. But thanks, Todd. I actually really like that topic. And for anyone else who ever sees something crazy beer related, please send it our way. Yeah, if you see anything wildly inappropriate, not only send us the story, send us some of the beers, too. You can send anyone who wants to send beers, feel free. Because I mean, far be it from us to say that if a beer tastes good that we would fully condemn it. Depending on the topic here. Yeah, if a beer's shitty, we'll tell you if it's shitty. Right. Yeah. All right, Jim, so you pulled this up, so I'm actually going to let you read this one. Sorry, we're passing a phone because my other laptop just died. All right, so, uh, yeah, this is – um, so a big topic that has not stopped lately is the Epic Game Store. So for those of you like Brian who don't know what the Epic Game Store is, no it's idea. like the newest competitor in the digital distribution market. So imagine a competitor to Steam, like direct competitor. So there's like Steam, what? there's GOG, GOG yeah. along those lines, and now there's Epic. Hmm. So Epic's owned by Epic Games, the people who made Fortnite. Yep. And they're really – like their big selling point for them as a brand <laughs> is that they give way more money back to developers through sales than Steam does. I think Steam takes like 30% to put it up on their store where Epic – I forget. It's probably in here or something like that. It might be like 10 okay. if that, even less. But – People people do not like the Epic Game Store. So one of the problems is like a big money person behind it was a Chinese company. So people are like, oh, there's – I think it's been confirmed almost that there's Chinese spyware in it. Yeah. When we like anytime you download something from there. Wait, you don't want to just give your data up to China? Here's, here's my thing with that. <laughs> Every that- single thing you download, if you go on the internet – there's going to be spyware, blowware, blah, 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 cookies, dumb shit. You're being tracked no matter what you do. Even no matter how good you are. There's still some. If you click a link to anything, something's going to find it on your goddamn computer. Do you, have, do you have a smartphone in your wallet? Do you have a smartphone in your chest pocket? Do you ever talk about something and go on Facebook and go, oh, look, an ad for the thing I was just talking about? That's weird because I keep Siri and everything turned off, but somehow it still knows that I talk about these things. I don't know. How about how about the people who sit there in their room typing all their angry articles about this, about, oh, the Chinese are monitoring us. Meanwhile, they have an Alexa next to them. So at this point, in this day and age, really? We all gave up, we all gave up our privacy decades ago. Mm-hmm. That's gone. So while I get, in theory, the problem with it, use your heads here, people. It's not that big a deal. Listen, Alex. I mean, Jim. Alex. Alex Jones. Oh, the globalists. <laughs> so, regardless of what you you're, you just said being true, um, you know, I think the bigger problem is with China, and they had that big issue. I, I'm kind of quoting from what I remember, but it's that Wafu or Wahoo, those phones or laptops that were trying to compete, and then it became illegal to own them because they were discovered that, like, some of the stuff you're searching is actually being sent back to China. It was going to be a big competitor to, like, Apple phones and things like that. Yeah. And now, like, you can't get it here. It's either China or... I mean, the Chinese make knockoff devices all the goddamn time. Yeah, but what I'm saying is I can get that, that if it's very blatant, that's kind of ballsy. Is this the first one we did, or did we do that one first? That was the first one. Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I mean... But, I mean, there's more complaints. Yeah. Go ahead. Like, another big... Compl- Here, here's what I think it comes down to. And the biggest complaint is people are bitching that they have to have another service installed on their computer. Who that's, fucking cares? That's the issue? The big issue is... It's now there's there's exclusivity because they're throwing money at developers to release their games early or exclusively through their store. 
So people don't want to download another service and have another thing that they have to use as a launcher. So so basically, what the con- the PC people are dealing with now is what console people is console exclusivity. The yeah. thing that we've been dealing with for fucking ever. And this is that thing that. And here's <clears throat> the thing, even better. It's less of a reason to bitch. Wah, another installer. You don't have to buy a new computer for it. You don't have to spend another money on another device for it. But Jim, it's work. You have to. You have to. You have to click a few more buttons. <laughs> you have to put your credit card info to the Chinese. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> sure, the Epic Game Store doesn't have like it's in its early stages. Yeah, it's got growing pains. It's only got like fifty some games on there in general. But it will. It doesn't it even have. It doesn't even have a shopping cart, which is yeah. dumb. It doesn't have a shopping cart, so. You know, people are scared. Oh, what if you know it doesn't have a th- final checkout thing or some shit like that? That I can understand is a dumb thing, but it seems like the main thing is that like I think like Shenmue Three recently got announced that it was originally going to be you know released to Steam, but then Epic threw money at it, so now it's going to be uh, exclusive exclusive to this. So people are like all up in arms now. It's like just download another fucking launcher. You're still going to get your game. Just download the other service. I don't see the big deal here. Capitalism. Yeah, and look, do, do you want do you want Steam to have the monopoly over all games, all digital distribution? Is that what you guys want? Because guess what? You know what's good for the consumer at the end of the day? Competition. Yeah. Well, if this is what's really bothering people, <clears throat> then all this shit that we've been talking about for I don't even know how long, how everything eventually is going to go to digital. Um, let's say in a future where Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, a.k.a. Microsoft – does just do digital and you can really just use your pc or whatever the case is then in the future you're going to need a launcher for every single thing and what we're seeing right now we got real greedy with the love of netflix streaming services yeah what happened with that Shut the fuck up i'm in the middle of talking sip your beer you're drinking like a bitch maybe i will uh the big news that just came out is Netflix is losing the rights to The Office, which is arguably one of their biggest selling points of having all The Office because everyone watches it. Right. What will women do now? What will, as as Justin Wang profusely uh, prominently said, what will happen to Tinder profiles now, to female print Tinder profiles? But this is the problem is because now every company wants to have their own streaming service. Like NBC is going to do this, and they have Office, Parks and Rec, plenty of other shows but do you really think people are going to turn around and really be willing to pay? I don't – whatever their price point is. The point is you're going to see more shit, more distribution like Epic Store, like other companies. There will be an Activision store probably eventually. There will be a, every major developer who's I mean, already a AAA. EA already has Origin. That's what I mean. So you're going to get every major one. And guess what? You're only going to be able to play their games on their exclusive shit because that's how people make money. So that's kind of the wave. Of the f- it's, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm saying at the end of the day, the consumer does get hurt by it. But be more choosy with what you're willing to download and pay for. True. But in this case, yeah. how are they being hurt by it if it's just a new, another launcher? No, no, no. You want to just you wanna, play launcher. the game? You want to play the game? Download the fucking service and put your credit card number to the Chinese. <laughs> All right. Jim, support America, not China. Right. <laughs> Look. Someone could say I'm the true globalist here, all right? We know you are. <laughs> but, I, like, it just seems like the biggest source of bitching is the fact that I have to go through the trouble and now have this on my computer and blah, blah, blah. Like, I just, I can't see why people care this much. Like, isn't Steam a garbage pile as it is? People care enough because it's something new to be mad has about. It, hasn't and, Steam and everyone... been, and uh, talking about your personal data... Hasn't Steam been hacked a thousand times? Hasn't the PlayStation Network been hacked a thousand you times? Know what it hasn't been. Xbox. It's goddamn right. I mean, it probably has been. But... Oh, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Switch hasn't yet. Switch Online hasn't been hacked yet. Because <laughs> it hasn't worked yet. Right, shut your mouth. <laughs> I can still play Star Soldier. Yeah, but Jim, who is going to feed people the videos where they're angry reaction to this new news or breaking news? This is bullshit and angry, angry. Like. Who? How are they going to get their views, Jim? Too late on the hot takes. I think it's I think it's the hot take community who's the most hurt by this. That's what I'm saying. What else are they going to report on? Who? What YouTubers come out and showed his cock or did whatever? They don't have another pro Jared. They need situations like this to get pissed at. Yeah, that's a good point. So you got to feed you got to feed the beast, Jim. Ah, it's all it's all symbiotic <laughs> at the end of the day, isn't it? So if anyone has very strong opinions, if you think it's good idea bad idea if you're really pissed off i want to i want to hear the like try and convince me why i should care 
That's what I think the big challenge here is going to be. Because I'm pretty sure I can debunk 90% of these arguments. Well, Jim, you can't debunk because at the end of the day... I will, I will D and bunk. Your thing is you don't care about anything. How can I, how can I lose if I don't care? Exactly. But you don't win if you don't care. Look, I still don't <laughs> lose, though. That's the key. It doesn't matter if I don't win, but as long as I don't lose, you're just, you're, you're I'm, just, I'm coming out ahead. Your ass is on that fence post so deep, you can't get out. Look, 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 look. <laughs> Easy here. Every I just took a stand over here. I could be like boogie and be like, oh, I could see the point over here. <laughs> but no, I didn't do that. Jim, why is he eating like that while watching porn over here? I don't, you know, I'm not even going to dig into it. If you have thoughts on this, please let us know. I'm fascinated. George is getting upset. Fuck. Oh, my God. All right. <clears throat> the next one is uh, comes to us from something I know that Jim has been complaining about for quite a while. It's that uh, Minecraft story mode has been delisted mm. and non-re-downloadable. <laughs> now, before Jim let me, goes Let me on get his, my smug, my smug yeah. face here. Now, before Jim goes on his bitch, here's the deal. I mean, I don't really care that much. Be, I mean, yeah. So, at the end of the day, what we're talking about is Telltale Games – that not the actual minecraft game but telltale their story mode is non-downloadable here's the deal when we brought this up and i say this to jim all the time it actually could be a mixed in with uh reasons or jim's terrible decisions which is go out if you're on a console get external hard drives when you download a game leave it on one do not ever delete a game from a hard drive and you have that game forever. Now, if you're Jim and you're cheap and you download games and then you delete them and you go back like five years later and you're like, why is my Simpsons game gone? Get, I did not delete back. shit. You delete I would it, never Jim. delete that. Jim, every single person who's ever commented, every person I know who actually has had it. Come to my house and download it for me. Because you deleted it. I That's did not the, delete it. If you needed to download it, that meant you deleted it. You're saying... I did not delete that. Well, if it's not there and you hit play and says you need to download... Probably that, my goddamn 10-year-old brother-in-law deleted it. Probably. It's probably what the hell goddamn happened now that you think about it. So so Jim's been on this crusade of, I hate digital because they could just take my game. Not if you have it on a, something. I have have two extra external hard drives. Uh, we've said many, many times, uh, we both do the Xbox games with gold. Every month, whether I want it or not, unless it's a game I really don't give a shit about, I download it. I throw it on one of those, and eventually I'll get around to it. It's a free game. Why not hold on to it? I don't delete games to make room because I'm I don't cheap. delete games either. Well, somehow the game got deleted. Maybe watch over your games better, Tim. It's digital bullshit. That's how it <laughs> happened. So this is another case of that. Does it suck? Yes, especially if you're one of the people who... If you buy the physical copy and it really is just, as we've said before, like a lot of these physical copies are just uh, key codes that you have to download anyway and you can't do it, that would suck. But hopefully uh, most game stores will be selling it for like two bucks. A dollar. Like selling oh, it right, to- right now, what do you call it? Going back to the Minecraft thing with the story modes. Uh, apparently it did have physical releases, so now people who own the discs of them, like I, I think it's on the current ones physically, but it was definitely... I've seen it on eBay for like the 360 versions that people are putting up there for like 70, 80 bucks now because the data is all on the disc or as much as it's going to be. Yeah. So like now there's a thing where it's like, oh, this is the only archive that's going to be out there of it basically Hmm. because it's getting pulled off there. Or if you have the digital copy, you're fine. Or if you have that, what's it say going forward? What if your hard drive dies? Then you're screwed. Then you never get it back again. Then you probably have like 700 other games you could play. Is that really the best game you could ever fucking play? Brian, what Are if we it's talking your favorite about, game? Like, I, what if it's your favorite game? Okay, if it was, what if it's the Symphony of the Night of Telltale games? What I'm saying is, is it? I don't know. I don't play Telltale. Exactly. Thank you. I won. <laughs> I don't see how you won that. Because if it was the best game, you would have played it, right? <laughs> not that you play good games. There's plenty of best games that I've not played, all right? <laughs> not that you play good games. But my point is, what, like... We're not talking about, like, oh, man, all of a sudden you can no longer play Super Mario Bros. 3. You can no longer play, like, a classic game. We're talking about Telltale Minecraft, right? We are. But what if down the line... Time to grow right, up. Right. It's always, time, time it's always part up. about down the line. Time, time to grow up. Look, I'm a future thinker, all right? You're stuck in the now. I'm thinking in the future. What if all of our favorites just eventually go, poof? Jim, if you're thinking in the future, right. why won't right. you... But I'm just saying, like, if it can happen to 
a franchise like Minecraft, the name Minecraft, even licensing itself out is big enough that you'd think they'd be like, oh, well, we can save this. We can have all the money in the world to throw at this to save it. But if even they go, eh, who cares? Then that's game in history that's going down to tubes, being raped from people. Yeah, is it going down tubes or is it the million gazillion people that have it digitally will be able to figure out a way to copy and just destroy it? But what if they don't? What if they're all dumb? Then that probably wasn't a good game to begin with, is it? Eh, dumb people like plenty of things, Brian. Does every game deserve to live on, Jim? Yes. I will say every game deserves to live on. Jim, if you had to... If right, you, what if, if you could have played Desert throw, Buster or Hong Kong 97? If you had to throw, give a really rough estimate of how many games ever existed ever across every platform, including PC, including yep. indie developers. Right. How many games? I don't know. Fucking hundreds, I, something, hundreds of thousands. Maybe even a million, right? Well, possibly. Can you still play the original Minecraft, the one that matters? Oh, yeah. Then is this really the biggest loss? If... Not saying it will. But Sign of things to come. <laughs> Sign of things to come. Nothing is safe. Well, Jim, if we get to that point, chances are we're already dead. <laughs> Some of us <laughs> earlier than others, probably. <laughs> so, although I'm giving Jim shit, I do get the, like, this is a potential crisis. It, but we've said it was weird as shit that Telltale fell on to begin with because they were the essential point-and-click revival to begin with. I'm shocked they failed. We I don't think we ever really dug into how they failed. And I think it was just mismanagement. Yeah. So at the end of the day, it's one of those deals where, yeah, as companies fail, if nobody picks up the slack, this will happen. But that's why if you're doing digital downloads, keep it on a hard drive. Don't be like Jim. Do better than Jim. That's a new mantra. <laughs> do better. Do better than me. Do better than Jim. Jesus. <laughs> he with the fire of a thousand suns. <laughs> All right, so, <clears throat> Jim, you also posted – actually, Jim posted almost all of these tonight. Um, talking about prep work here. Yeah. Talking about Talking about providing content. <laughs> all these hot stories. But before we do that, talk about the first beer. Okay. So, <clears throat> the thing is with the Hunter, it's a double milk stout. Now, for anyone who's had a milk stout, you know it tends to be a little bit more creamy and that lactose is – either sits heavy, depends on your stomach – but the thing is, the beer comes in at a, is it on the can. I think it's almost 11%. Oh. So it's a strong beer. It's a lot more boozy than most stouts. So when you drink this, you're like, hmm, it's sugary. It's good, but goddamn, like it, uh, it leaves a little bit more of a burn. It's a little drier than typical stouts. I love the shit out of this. I, this was the first beer I've ever, ever actually had from this company. Although, as I've mentioned, uh, you look through all their cans, and the appeal of their artwork is pretty off the charts. I'll be going back and trying a few more of their beers, but what do you think, Jim? Because I know you're not the biggest fan of stouts. Um, I'm generally, like, stouts aren't the kind of beer that I, like, go out of my way to drink. Yeah, you but, don't like flavor. <clears throat> <laughs> but that was, it, I've got to say, that was pretty good. Yeah. Like, um, the booziness, I think, leveled itself out really well with, like, the overall, like, stouty flavor. So it almost made, like, it was almost like two wrongs making a right to make it, like, extra smooth almost. Maybe not wrongs, I should say, but two extreme flavors coming together to make, like, um, not that they cancel each other out, but they played off each other really well. Yeah. Okay. So would you... I'd recommend it. I'll definitely try that again. Yeah. And, I mean, honestly, just for that artwork. Yeah, the artwork's fantastic. This, this is one of those type of cans, and... <clears throat> The artwork looks like, say you've ever seen a, like, collector's special edition of, like, GTA and the way they stylize, like, the yes. covers and stuff like that. It definitely reminds me of something along those lines. Yeah, and... With a lot more jab shit. Th- Oops! Jim, I thought it was China that you hated, not jab shit. God <laughs> look, damn it, Jim. Look, Brian, I hate everything. All right? Jim, Jim, don't be the angry beer nerd. <laughs> <laughs> you got nothing. No, I'm, I'm, I'm tapping out on that one. All right. <laughs> I'm going to get myself in trouble. All right. <clears throat> Next one Leeds UK Retro Market Hygiene Sign. So this was on Twitter. This is more of a follow up to the, uh, the tournament, the Yu Gi Oh tournament that was like, you stop smelling. So Jim uh, posted this. And once again, if you're watching the segment, you'll see the picture. Otherwise, click the link below. You'll see the picture from Twitter. Hygiene notice. 
We expect a basic level of human hygiene on the premises at all times. If you can afford retro games, you can afford deodorant. Also, use of the word minty is banned. Well, that that's a, that's a British kind of thing. Yeah. Basically, if a game's in like really good condition, like oh, this is minty. Oh, Gabna, it's a minty game, yeah. Well, I agree with banning that. Loudly clearing sinuses also ban Jimmy or out. And dogs. Brides just a cocaine. Dogs welcome. Uh, I mean, I can completely believe they need to post shit like this. See, Brad, people say that gamers need to rise up, but what about the stinky man out there? When does the stinky man finally rise up and fight back against his oppression? He doesn't get to rise up. He needs to go fucking clean. Ah, he probably does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is just a funny follow-up, like Jim said. I think we've we've kind of hit this one a few times, but... I just want to see this happen more. Clean yourself up. Fuck. I will say. No. No, there's no I will be, 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 be. Oh my god. Before we go more into too many games later when we're gonna talk about it, I will say not as stinky this year. We were also we were, way more drunk than when we went in. That's a good point. Alright, maybe So maybe we didn't we, notice it. Since it might have been a little dulled. Okay. Yeah. And the next day we were both a little too hungover. So I think like we were like, uh I don't know if it was better. I'm just saying I like to think that there's there's hope. <laughs> Maybe the stinky gamer finally Jim, rose up. You're supposed up. to be angry one. I'm supposed to be. You're supposed to be the pessimist. I'm supposed to be the optimist. I think I've done enough pessimism so far, Brian. <laughs> Even I need to take a break sometimes. So, any of our f- fans from the UK, I would love if you know any of these stories personally. And I hope someone went to that market or that. Uh, I think yeah. it was an event. And if anyone, I don't care where you're from. If you go to any event, make it board games, card games. If you have any funny stories, please send us our way because we would love to hear about them because it's, uh, it's just amazing that certain certain uh, niches kind of tend to pull people who have poor hygiene. The things you have to tell people. Not the things that you expect. But the things you have to tell people in this it, day and age. It's, uh, it's what happens when you have too good health care and everyone stays alive too long, Jim. Jesus. <laughs> I'm just saying. Right, don't talk about the NHS. Don't come for your blood. I'm just saying. Darwin is getting screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Jim. Ooh, this could take a turn. <laughs> All right. So Jim also put on. Another kind of follow-up story. <clears throat> yeah, from clickondetroit.com. Iron Maiden files a lawsuit over the Ion Maiden video game. Jim, did you ever hear about this video game? No. So we were talking about no, 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 roses. no, exactly. So they filed a two million dollar lawsuit against a gaming company for the trade trademark infringement over a video game Iron Maiden. Uh, they accused the company 3D Realm. Oh, really? That's okay. That's the old Duke Nukem. Um, the British rock group argues that the title Iron Maiden is nearly identical to Iron Maiden. No, they, what? they're smart at connecting those. What? <laughs> well, I mean, it is one. Wait a second, that sounds like a... <laughs> That's the lawyers they have, Bri. Jim. That's the think tank they have going on this one. God damn it, Jim. What? <laughs> How many... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Um, yeah. 3D Realms obviously respond to the lawsuit saying the claims are frivolous. And they heard about this. By claiming their old school school first person shooter Iron Maiden is infringing on a trademark, so I guess they're still making things like 3D, like uh, Duke Nukem 3D. I guess maybe it's one of those spiritual successors we see so much these days. Yeah, and obviously they made Max Payne and Commander Keen, but here's the deal: <clears throat> you know what you're doing. Like, don't act shocked that they called you. <laughs> I, it, I we've said before with Guns and Roses and that beer with this Guns and, and Rose. Yeah, and, and plenty of other, I guess, bands or just <coughs> trademarks. You, like, you <laughs> really need to go after certain things. Like, what's going on that you really have to do this? But at the same time, if you're a company, you, you know, you're towing that line. You're dicking around. You're like, ah. You're you, probably, you, probably doing a little bit on purpose there. You, you, you think it's that. like every single person who's ever gotten pulled over for speeding. You know you were speeding. You know it's against the law. You just don't expect for you to be the one that actually gets – and you're always like, oh, really? You got to pull me over? Like, fuck. But you know what you were doing was wrong. You got caught. Kind of fess up and move on. Look, Brian, I'm making a back scratcher called Back Sabbath, and I think I think I have a good idea here. 
I'm pretty sure. Follow me on this one. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be right in that wheelhouse where nothing bad can possibly happen. I uh, I wish you all in that endeavor, Jim. Back scratch, huh? Jim, you should start a newfound glory hole. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> See what I did there? That you, shit, you beat me on that one. Do it? Do I win that one? I don't give. I don't. I don't concede a lot to you, you Dutch prick. But I'll give you that one. I think it's a really shit. Two million dollars just to a cease and desist. A say, new found glory, glory hole. Now I want to delve deeper into this. Now is this a kit for making your own glory holes? I mean, or is this like say you're building urinal walls or? Stall walls that just come pre precasted, we could say, in the business. I would say the door's wide open on this market, and you can even use our songs as certain models. Like it's all downhill from here. My friends, come over God. here. Whatever you want to do, Jim. Why did I, why, Jim? Why, I'm why just, I'm just, I'm just trying to open up doors. <sighs> doors have been opened. <laughs> doors have certainly been opened. <laughs> Not the only thing that's been opened. So yeah, um, I think. I'm curious. I want to keep following these kind of stories just because this this probably happens all the time. The amount seems excessive. How much did that game actually sell? Like, if it sold, like, 20 copies, and come on, man. But if it sold, like, a couple million copies... If it even came out. Like, I don't even know if it came it, out or it, something they just found out about. It apparently did, but I don't what, know. What a loss. That's what I'm saying. Like, guys... 3D Realm, for you to act shocked. You knew what you were doing. Iron Maiden, come on, man. D- come on. Like, come on. Glory oh. hole. <laughs> New foul. <laughs> Jim. Like that. It's you. <laughs> Jim's done for the rest of the podcast. I'm checking out. I'm, I'm about done with this now. <laughs> All right. When I'm the less disgusting one, that's when that's when it's just it's uh, it's all over. I'm packing it in. So if you guys have any thoughts on this, please let us know. And if you heard any other bands or companies that sue over developers, beer, it doesn't matter. Send it to us. We love hearing about these. Um, the next one is one that I've heard going around. I didn't follow up. It's again. There's been a lot of talk about. Uh, loot boxes we've covered it a few times on this podcast and here's the deal excessively there's anti-loot box bill pose the anti-loot box bill poses a real threat to sports video games um essentially senator josh hawley had proposed the anti-microtransaction legislation which will punish if not obliterate a staple genre of video gaming at the end of the day, we've said this many, many times. Loot boxes, you know what you're doing. You're releasing a game. They're making claims, hey, we're not making enough money off of just the $60. This is a way to make money back. But in many cases, we found that, uh, was it, that they're really not worth money. Kids were spending excessive amounts of their parents' money. All the shit like Apple had the issues with for a while when people were in app purchases and just like racking up credit card bills. And at the end of the day, this seems to be a really big issue, potentially the most, for sports video games. Which, this is where they're claiming they make most of their money, not off the games themselves. Because they're claiming to license out NBA, MLB, FIFA teams, it's a lot of money. Uh, I don't know, Jim. What, let me get your take first. Because this is, this is, a, this is a, like... I don't like loot boxes, but I also hate the idea of legisl- legislation against it. Do you want Do you want the government in your video games, no, Brian? Obviously not. No. So anyone saying that the government has to step in, shut the fuck up. Yeah. It, like saying the government has to be involved in this, one, it's not like they don't have better <laughs> shit to do. And two, I mean, they don't do anything anyway. So, <laughs> but to get back on the topic here, I'm almost, I'm almost for loot boxes anymore. I think I've come full circle to the fact where it's when it comes down to it at the end of the day, it's, it's people's money. If they want to spend their money on dumb shit, let the people spend their money on dumb shit. And when it comes to the argument, now my big problem with this article is Polygon, which is always strike one. And then two, the defense of loot boxes because sports games can't be profitable without them. 
Ryan, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm pretty sure that yearly sports titles have been around for mm, somewhere in the range of forever. Mm-hmm. So if if this if these games don't make money without loot boxes, how have they gone this long? How have they gone for 30 plus years of yearly releases of games that are just barely more than an updated roster and like one or two mechanic changes, if that? How could these diehard games here, these struggles of game development, these masters of the industry, how they continue to put these out if they've never made money on it until the last three years when loot boxes have been a thing? It's called capitalism, Jim. I just Profits I, have to keep going up. But I just don't you understand. You can't plateau. I just don't understand how you could possibly keep a thing going for so long, thinking one day down, 30 years down the line, it might be profitable, so we're just going to have to keep doing it. Yeah. So something tells me that that excuse might be a little bit bullshit. That's my biggest thing. I agree with you 100%. I do not, and let me be very clear, I don't want any legislation into video games, period. I don't care what the fuck the video game's showing. You should not have government intervention into video games. Now, the flip side, I don't feel bad for these companies that are doing this kind of bullshit because we know it's bullshit, and in an ideal world, consumers, us, gamers, would be smart enough to stop spending money on them. But that's not the case because they also know they're targeting people who, once you say your kid comes and, uh, Dad, I want to play da-da-da-da-da. Uh, can I use your credit card? Sure. Once yep. it's in there, go ahead. There's a problem. Why don't the parents be parents and say, no, you cannot use the credit card? We know how that works out for all things, Jim. And you'll be broken down after two questions. So when it comes – and you can you can play that avenue. But what I'm saying is, yeah, it also gets to that point where <laughs> – I did, I did say I would never be one of those uh, TV on the phone parents. And God damn, does Mickey's Clubhouse get yeah. me out of some jams. It, uh, the end of the day, <clears throat> it's probably kids, younger kids – who are just racking up these loot boxes. It's this pay-to-play. Which it always is. Pay-to-win. Now, where it gets fuzzy is, are you okay with loot boxes if loot boxes are a pay-to-win and say there's, like, tournaments held that you can win money and someone has purchased their shit? There is gray areas. But once again, it goes back to what I said. I do not want government intervention with goddamn video games. (sighs) I... I just don't feel bad for either party on the side. Like, right. hey, scumbags with the loot boxes, if you can't make money, if you really are having that much trouble, raise your games to 80 bucks a year. Just do that. If the new price point for video games needs to be 80 bucks for you to produce it, like Jim said, if you're truly not making a profit, do that. And the market will determine if it's valuable or not. If it's not... Maybe you have to let people go. Maybe you don't get those licenses. And then the NBA and all these major league sports places, they will, not that they're going to take a deficit, but somebody will come along and you do those video games like they did in the 90s and 80s where it's not exactly the same guy. It's not LeBron James. It's LeBron, you know, Johnson. It'll be, like, similar enough where you just don't get the license for the actual person. There's other avenues you can do other than loot boxes, but once again, don't have government intervention. Don't do that. And we already live in the age of season passes, of downloadable content after DLC. the fact. Well, we're, we're suckers for for a lot of things. Yeah, we've, we've paid our share. We've paid our dues with that shit. It's just when I see an article like this from Polygon defending a company like EA with its loot boxes inside their yearly sports releases, it's just that's like the depth of come on here. And actually our – one of our proud patrons, Broski, wrote, it's the internet equivalent of a blowjob on a casting couch. Shameful. Yeah. Uh, Tell him he's wrong. He's not wrong. So let me ask you this. I can remember games being 60 bucks brand new for Genesis and Super NES. So here's the question, and <clears throat> I think it's legit. You're telling me since then prices for everything else hasn't gone up? We've just accepted sixty price, $60 price point as the as the markup now if a game never released dlc and you get all content for free if you had to pay 80 85 bucks for a game but you knew you weren't going to charge anything else outside of that and that was a new price point would you still pay it yeah depends on the game obviously but yeah and we know this is the game you want yeah and we know we absolutely know this could affect certain people but let's put it this way jim and i 
we're cheap motherfuckers when it comes to games. There's very few, I'd say three to four brand new games I get a year. Other than that, I wait till they're cheap and you can get it from a variety, Amazon, game stores, wherever you need to. You can find a cheaper deal. Just wait till it's used. You might not be lucky enough to get brand new, but you know what? If that was just raising the price point and everyone could buy into that, then we'd get rid of loot boxes. We'd get rid of DLC and all Look, this bullshit. Chrono Trigger was a hundred dollar game when it came out. Did it sell any good? I don't know. And is it a game that people talk about? People <laughs> game game people like? I don't. I don't like it because I think either way. Once again, at the end of the day. Either scenario, if loot boxes come out on top and it's okay, it, at the end of the day, it kind of fucks over gamers who are serious. Because if you love your game and people are willing to pay to play f- or pay to win, it will fuck up your multiplayer. And there, there's arguments against that, but whatever. If the legislation wins, that could open a door to, well, what else can they go after? Right. So it's it, there, it's a shitty situation. Yeah, it's just the idea. The idea of a triple A billion dollar company crying poor. No, I don't buy yeah. That Come on. Get sued by Iron Maiden. Come on. <laughs> Do we really need a Madden every year? I mean, and the Madden sells. Do we really need an NBA live every year? Well, just those same people who are diehard fans. You're telling me they wouldn't pay eighty bucks instead of sixty? Yeah. If they could have all their shit and, and have it, it guaranteed. I, and I'm saying I don't care. Like, yes, those people need those games every year. Just and like, like I said, Spend your money how you want. It's your money. Yeah. Just raise the price so you don't have to deal with this shit. Like Ben Shapiro over here said, free market. If I'm Alex Jones, you're Ben Shapiro. God damn it, Jim. I don't know. Okay. Got him. So let us know what you think. Uh, I'm curious if anyone is on the side of legislation that follows us. Yeah. I Yeah. Let us know if you really think the government should get involved. Yeah. It's never, not a good idea. Because if you want to, if you think convincing me that uh, the Epic Game Store is a problem is going to be tough, try try telling me that this that having the government involved in this shit isn't going to be a problem. Because everyone loved it when they tried to put these uh, the content restrictions on people. Yeah. And so, the and the grading system. Damn you, Mortal Kombat. Majority ratings. <laughs> damn you, night trapping your zombies with your blood sucking devices. God damn it, Jeff. T- times have changed, Bri. All right, so <clears throat> before we get to our last two topics, we we want to do a quick coverage of we went to too many games this year. We yep. did it last year for the first time. Uh, we met up with our buddy Dan from Console Wars. Obviously, can't say enough good things about him. But uh, this beautiful year, man, make sure you subscribe to his page. Yeah, links are below. Uh, this this year we did it right because yep. last year we just literally we went to the Saturday went way too early we got there by like 10 30 in the morning yeah and it was fine we still met up with some people but like it was just okay we bought some shit and left this time we got a hotel did copious amounts of drinking well right. we can go we can go hit by hit for this so all right. we got the hotel we got it with dan from console wars yep and we're like all right we're gonna do this shit right so we were in the hotel room we started drinking at first we decided to play fuck the dealer classic <laughs> card game so we're playing and playing, and the idea Jim, of the already, game. You already fucked up, though. Uh, what happened on the very first card? <sighs> so why don't we lay out what fuck the deal is, in case you didn't know, because we didn't know before this. Um, it, it had been years since we played. It's very simple. You have a dealer, not all the other players. And the person to your left, if, if I'm the dealer, I say, Jim, uh, guess the very first card. You just have to guess the number. Simple enough. So Dan's dealing, and he, and you have to drink a certain amount if they either. Yeah. So you get two guesses to be like you get two guesses. So if, if you guess and you're wrong, you get one more guess. If you guess right on the first guess, the dealer has to drink six seconds. If you guess right on the second guess, three seconds. And if you guess wrong both times, you, the person who guessed wrong, they drink three seconds. Well, they have to drink like the difference of the numbers. I think. That's correct. Yes. Yeah, sorry. So. <clears throat> If I say I guess 10 and the number 6, I drink 4 seconds. After three wrong guesses in a row, and it has to be in a row, then the deck moves over to the next person as a dealer. So <laughs> so Dan, right? he's a dealer, so I get to pick first. And right away I said 8. And Jim, what card came right out? Well, Brian, it was an 8. 
And statistically, that's pretty good, right? Yeah, statistically, that's some bullshit <laughs> right there. So, so me and you are just like, so, of course, me knowing you, that son of a bitch you are, I go, oh, fucking course. Dan goes, how do you pick this right? I'm, he's like, this is impossible. I've never seen this before. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just going, that's why I call him Brian Bullshit Quinn. Yeah. I I have a innate ability to guess numbers, get luck on games like that. This whole this this whole game was a game of just beating the odds, Brian. <laughs> So, you know, we're going back and forth. It's pretty, like... It's, Deck, deck's going around. It's moving. We're all drinking. We're having fun. It's it's what you would expect from this game. Like, it, uh, it stays on someone for a little bit. And obviously, as the deck gets smaller, the, the pool that you're pulling from, like, you know, you lay out all the cards that have been guessed. So you know what's out there. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, at some point, all the eights are done. All the tens are done. Or you see there's only one ace pulled. So you're kind of like playing the odds of, okay, there's like only been one ace, so maybe I'll say ace. There's only like one nine, so that's probably rare. So we get uh, probably about halfway through a deck, and Jim's a dealer. <laughs> we do, we're almost at the exact halfway part of the deck. And, I become uh, the dealer, and I seem to get in this little bit of a rut, Brian. <laughs> we're a little bit of a rut where giving out the cards. I need to guess the card right. I guess I'm drinking a little bit. Get over here. Got the first one wrong. Oh, okay. Second one. Oh, he guessed it right. Okay, good. It goes back and forth to the point where, for the rest of the game, I was the goddamn dealer. <laughs> somehow, once again, against all odds, like our dear friend Brian here in the beginning of the game. Somehow, against all odds, for the entire second half of the goddamn deck, cards never went away from me. So, really, we're talking 3 o'clock, 3.30 in the afternoon here. And I'm just downing beers at this point. Like, you're all just casually drinking. Being... But he's really sipping like a bitch. So he should he, he have finished. Let's put it this way. And the amount that he did drink, he probably finished a solid three, maybe four beers. He should have probably finished like five or six. I think I did one. You, you, you were skipping. But we weren't going to give you shit because we kind of felt bad for you at a certain point. because it Maybe was, I was in survival mode too. It was, it was pretty goddamn uncanny that... Like, <clears throat> I don't know if me or Dan actually individually ever got one wrong. If we always ended up getting on at least a second. It was it was because I had a couple of hopeful spots, and then it was always a goddamn second try. <laughs> and me and Dan, like, and Dan's he introduced the game to us, and he couldn't. He's like, I've never seen this happen in the history of playing. This game. He's never seen the luck the dynamic between the two of us. <laughs> so, so, needless to say, Jim was none too happy <laughs> after the end of that game. <sighs> but by this point, even before I came, we played a few other games, and we just generally drank. So yeah, even when we got to the hotel, we went to the bar, the hotel bar. I mean, yeah. we got there before Dan, so we just started drinking anyway. It's a safe assumption to say, total, each of us probably before we even got to the con was six, eight, ten beers. I, like no, that. I would say easily, especially because me and you went to a bar. Honestly, it might be in the nine. Yeah, probably. Well, like it, it's really high up there. It was because it was just like ah, whatever. And we're talking like four in the afternoon at this point. Yeah. So now we're headed to the con, and we're all feeling pretty feeling good. Pretty good. Uh, we get there as we said last time. We got there super early. This is like late afternoon, and the con is open till. I think it's till like. It's, it was eight or ten. Eight or ten. It, it goes pretty 10. late. Surprisingly late. But obviously, not all stands stay open that late. And the big poll for anyone who's never been to too many games, other than just uh, random vendors and people being open, they have a lot of YouTubers, a lot of people in the gaming industry there, you know, angry video game nerd. Well, yeah, like it's it's run by the people from Screen Wave, which is ABGN and, uh, you know, Mike Matei and Hack the Movies and all the guys in rental reviews and all them people. So they have... They have uh, – the best way the convention center to explain is they have the main area with all the booths, and then they have another one where food. And this year it was actually opened up, and they had like a Smash tournament going on. And yeah, it was a whole way bunch bigger. Of, yeah, a whole bunch of computer tables set up. But either way, so we get there. Um, we don't have a strong desire. Like we're not there looking for a particular piece of like game to buy like we're not there to but we know we're gonna buy shit but we're not searching we're just there because we just want to you know hang around with dan and meet some people so we meet up with some of his buddies um yeah the first one we met the guys from square painter adam and his wife yep great so. people who i might as well throw out there uh last year i believe i showed on here i had bought my splatter house uh photo from them 
And this year, it's actually, and once again, goddamn white. So I'm gonna, oh, there, there okay, you go. There we go. So obviously, it's Dracula from Castlevania, and beautiful. It's, I mean, the work he does is amazing. We went over there because our buddy, our buddy Dan, was actually buying a custom piece from Adam, which was Chrono Trigger. Yeah. Yeah. Looks awesome. Um, we're going to have his link below. If you've never seen, he hand paints pixel art, essentially. Yeah, and he it does looks, it on, like, grid paper, and it's just so intricate. Like, while we're sitting there talking to him, people are coming up like, oh, like, how'd you print that or something? He's like, no, I, I hand painted this. I even asked him that. I was like, I was like, how much for is I was like, is that a print or is that just, like, an actual recreation? He's like, no, that's a hand drawn. Yeah, his work is it, – it's crazy. And, I, and we can't recommend him enough if, you, if you're into video games and you want some really good-looking art. Go over and see him. Yeah. But yeah. he was sharing his booth with John Riggs, and we talked to him for like five minutes. Nice guy. Yeah. Super nice guy. Yeah, we got we got a nice picture with him. Uh, so, yeah, we met Adam, him, and then um, his buddy Dan, who actually, I guess we can say, yeah, he works on with for Shenmo 3. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he's kind of like, I don't know if you call him a sales rep or – He's he he's involved with Shenmu three and just kind of getting the word out there, but um you know we kind of just walked around for a while. Of course, drank more beers. Yeah, That's, we kept going back to the beer uh, stand. <clears throat> and Dan was just running in because Dan knows a lot of people there, so we were just kind of hopping from person to person to person. Yeah, we we were hangers on. <laughs> yeah, and you know we were, once again we were there like ah we'll buy some stuff and we'll get to what we bought the second day, but uh. I'd say total we stayed there two hours tops. May I th- want to say we left around like six. Yeah. Something like that. So from there, uh, if you go kind of diagonal from where the expo is, we went to this place called Arnold's. Yeah, because there was um I think it was a band that either Dan or the Square Painter guys knew. Yep. That was uh they were performing there. Yeah, Adam actually. Adam yeah. the Square Painter. So <clears throat> yeah, we go over to here and for those of you who aren't in the Northeast it's essentially think Dave and Buster's, except it has go karts, um, a more grown up bar, and an area for a band to play. Yeah, it was like a real like all encompassing activity center. It's like a fun zone, but definitely made for adults. Yeah, that's the best way out. We'll describe it. Naturally, we spent most of the time at the bar. Yeah, we spent a lot of time there. We had already met with Blaber by then. So, yep. um, our buddy, we finally got to meet him in person. Yep, which was awesome. Super nice guy. Once, once again. again link below check out his videos he makes awesome content uh super nice guy and we met a bunch of other people and I, it's killing me that i can't remember names they were a lot of them were youtubers but you know no one's sitting there like oh what do you do like we're just sitting there like who wants a drink like yeah who's getting fucked yeah up? everyone's basically there to party yeah and uh <clears throat> and this isn't even the people like i know like the big time youtubers all had their own after party after Oh, yeah. Like that, we're we're with a lot of the vendors and just like the randos who were there. Yeah, and we met a few other people. We'll probably get into more next podcast, but you know, most of the day I'd say we stuck to beer. Now we're introducing shots into the mix. Yes, shots got introduced <laughs> once we got to that second bar. So we're doing fireball and whatnot, and we're all starting to feel uh, really good. Uh, the big thing with the too many games is that there's always like a VIP. You can buy a VIP pass to kind of go to this other hotel and party afterwards. So <clears throat> we go with Dan, Adam, and we go back to Adam's hotel and start drinking some more. Start drinking some more. Then now we th- start breaking out the vodka shots. Yeah, and this is a point where, God, I know you slowed down a little bit. Not much. Not much. But a but... little bit. But vodka is literally my kryptonite and – I always look at it, I'm like, this is a terrible fucking night. Like, why? Like, you know, and it's not like we said no. No. We just kept going with it. No, it's like, I can't be rude. This is the part where mistakes start to be made. Yeah. So, we're, you so know, we're, I think, yeah. I think from that, that point we said when we initially left, we might grab some pizza at the expo. We didn't eat a whole ton, but uh, we had like one slice of pizza at the yeah. expo. And Dan's a vegan, so he didn't even have that. Yeah. <laughs> that poor guy. <laughs> yeah. And we're, you know, slamming back shots, whatever. Now, the easiest way I can try to describe this is if you've ever been to an industrial park or places where there's a lot of hotels, you'll know it's usually big highway, chain of hotels, and then a few blocks, Not you know, what would be equivalent to a few blocks down, other hotels. Whatever hotel we were at, we needed to walk to the Hilton, 
I believe it was. <laughs> it was wherever the VIP party was. I'm going to call it the Hilton, and let's say we're over here. Let's say it's it's less than a five minute walk away. So this is where this is where Jim Jim B and Jim comes into play. So we're all walking, and. At one point, I just kind of look over, and I see Jim kind of stumbling towards the bushes. I don't think much of it because Jim pissing outside is – Nothing new. If you've ever drank with Jim, it's like he takes a beer, sip of beer. He's like, I got to pee. I mean, like, he's peeing a lot. I'm like, sure, he can't wait five minutes to just go, or he kind of went to a hotel before we left like I did. <laughs> no, no, he, he's got to go find a bush. Details. So – Let's also be very clear, between these two hotels is a straight road. It's a, one direction. what I hear, if you it's were, a straight you, road, and it's a five-minute walk. If you were playing a side-scroller, you were going from left to right. If you're playing, side, if you're playing side, Skyrim, it's like a, it's not long. Yeah. But you're not playing Skyrim. You're playing, you're you're playing you're, real life. You're on a single, singular, linear path. It's, and we're in Oaks, PA. There's not a lot of intersecting, no. crisscrossing highways out you here. You turn around. There's one road. You turn around, there's a highway. You turn back, there's a hotel we just came from. And you look over in the distance, there's the objective. So, <clears throat> Jim's drunk. I'm talking with Dan, talking with people. We get to the new new place. I'm just assuming Jim's, you know, eyes lagging behind. He's yeah. follow, But he's following us. So we get to the new hotel. I, I walk in, go to the bar in the VIP area. It's cash only. Well, fuck. I don't carry cash. Where's the nearest ATM? Of course they don't have a goddamn ATM anywhere nearby. They're like, oh, the Wawa, a few hotels over. So now I have to cross the highway, drunk as shit, run over there, get some cash. On my way back, I I throw up a few times, but it, was, uh, it wasn't like even good throw-ups because we didn't eat. So I was like, I'm pretty notorious where my throw up is I'm a full boot and rally. Like I throw up and going to go the rest of the night. I'm not like, oh, I got sick. I'm done for the rest of the night. So now I get back and now I'm realizing, fuck, I found Dan. Where's Jim? Yeah. The timeline is very important here because you need to understand Jim's thinking. We're talking probably a timeline of about 10, 15 minutes yeah. tops. So Jim. Which is all it took for me. Jim, where are you at? And he says... At hotel, where are you? I'm, I'm at the hotel. I'm like, we're here. Like, where where are you standing? Huh? Like, which hotel are you at? I said, what do you mean? We're at the one with the party, like the Hilton or whatever. Oh, I went back to our hotel. Now, mind you, that is a roughly 10-minute drive from Uber to get from Here's- where we were to get from where we were to get back to our old hotel. Which means, in Jim's mind, he goes, he pees, and thinks, oh, where'd everyone go? Well, clearly, he could have walked that extra three minutes down this road. They must have went back to our hotel where nothing was going on. So let me call an Uber and get over there. So, whatever. Jim's drunk. This is nothing new for me. No. No, dude. Also, and also, what do you call it? It wasn't that. It was me texting you after I, I peed. And I come out from the bushes and I go... Everybody go. So I text in barely English text at this point. And it's basically along the lines of where you at and you told me we're going to the Hilton. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'll be right over. So between sending go on that text and me thinking what to do next in order to get there, somehow lines don't get crossed. And I go, where'd everybody go again? And then I go back to the hotel. You know what? Let, let me be clear. I pulled up the text. And the timeline. I'm I'm claiming no fault of anyone's own on this, but mine. Yes. Okay. Ten thirty five. I write. I'm running to Wawa. They only do cash. He said, which is a shame too, because I had a fuckload of cash on me. Which is great, because one minute later he wrote at ease. All. Oh, I don't know what the fuck. He's probably trying to text his wife or something. I don't know what that means. At ease. All. Oh. And then he wrote Wawa. And then at ten forty seven he wrote, where are you at? I said, I'm here, 1057. Where are you at? 1058. On my way back to hotel. So now I'm confused because I'm like, what the fuck you mean, like, on your way back? Like, I thought, in my mind, I'm like, maybe he went to Wawa, too. And let's put, let's put this in perspective, too. A big reason that we were doing the overnight and stuff like that was to mingle, was to network, was to but meet people, was to party with the people. The whole point Shit was like to actually go to this VIP after party. So, of so course, hang. I find a way to yeah. Especially so, being a social media guy, you'd think I'd be the one to talk to them to keep these relationships and, going. And remind you, 
I've thrown up at this point. I'm not in exactly tip-top shape either, but I, two minutes after he says, on my way back to the hotel, I say, which hotel? He says, the Radisson, which is where we stayed. Let me know where you are, and I'll come out. This was at 11.01. So right now it's back and forth, a lot of back and forth. All good. I said, at the Hilton, where did you go? Not real, like thinking like, there's no way he went back to the fucking hotel. <laughs> Two minutes later, went to take a piss and most y'all, meaning missed y'all. I'll come over now. 11.05. 11.08, he writes Hilton in Phoenixville. Like, we're going to be, and, and it's everything's in fucking Phoenixville. So now he's just like, <laughs> whatever. So that was 11.08. At 11.45, I wrote, come on over, thinking, like, I saw his last text, like, okay, like, obviously he's on his way. Still no answers from this fucking guy. And now I'm looking at 12.30. <laughs> I say, where are you at? At 12.30 at 12 something, I said, yo. And that was the end of it. No, I, don't no, even, there, I don't even remember. There's no, there's no answers from Jim at this point. Needless to say, this whole time, as I'm texting him, I'm getting drunk as shit. I'm taking more shots. I'm doing doing shit. Dan, he's drinking too. We're all drinking. The end of the night comes. Me and Dan, we get an Uber home. Well, didn't Dan also pass out outside for a little while? He passed out for a little In while. In a lawn chair. But he was going strong, unlike and some he was, people. And he was actually there, unlike yeah. some people. So... <clears throat> It was a really fun time there. You had a few disappearing acts on you. That's all you had to say. Yeah. And I get me and Dan an Uber. We go back. I'm like, I'm going to kill this motherfucker. Like, every time with Jim, there's an event when we did our first video shoot. When we, there's many things that Jim just somehow. Why do it, I leave the house? It falls apart. Why do I go anywhere? So I don't do anything. So me and Dan, I'm like, you know, we're going to go and we're going to fuck up. Too. Like, let's go mess with him. I know he's passed out. <clears throat> Bust in the room. It's dark as it would be for someone sleeping. We turn on lights. We look at the beds. They're b completely made. No one's been there. We're like, holy fuck. We lost, like, I'm like, I got to call Jim's wife. We lost Jim. Like, what the fuck? And <clears throat> Dan was like, maybe he's in the bathroom. And I'm like, ah, the door shut. That's weird. A very smart guess by yes. Dan, by the way. Knock on the door. Uh, <laughs> uh. I was like, Jim, you motherfucker. What? What do I do? I... I and then we spent the next, I don't know how many hours, first just reprimanding Jim for, at first he didn't want to take no blame. He's like, no, you guys left me and I figured you came back here. It's only five hours later. <laughs> like, like it's. This is probably what happened. I don't remember any of it. This so. is also three in the morning at this point, mind you. And uh, yeah, so we pretty much spend the rest of the night uh, eating Doritos. Quoting and, The Departed. And, and quoting The Departed, singing random songs, just completely fucked up. Needless to say, we're all hungover. Don't feel great the next day. Jim's not even willing to do the morning beer with me and Dan. No. Jim was really rough, even though he had more rest, because I'm pretty sure he fell asleep in the bathroom. I'm pretty sure I fell asleep sitting on the toilet. Yeah. Not the first time that's happened. No. <laughs> so we go to the, so the next day, Jim and I are both like, Ugh. and Dan's like, yeah, <laughs> I'm, fucking I'm, he's, like, he's like, dude, I got, I'm going to go back. Like, I got to say hi to some people. Jim and I were both, like, doing a gut check. Like, do we want to go back? Yeah, let, let's go back. We'll buy some shit. Like, let's look at the vendors We'll now. hit the floor, yeah. So, next day, um, the funnier part of the story's over. Jim, you you have more stuff, so I'll start with mine. You know, we're doing the vendors, but we're fucking hurting. Um, two things. I only bought two things. Now, I've said many times on this challenge. Well, we both, both the shirts we're wearing right now, we yeah. bought. So, basically, for mine... If you've ever seen Trick or Treat, it's Sam from it, which you know I love horror. And Jim, I got Splatterhouse shirt. Which that is long a shirt, shirt. Uh, Dan's buddy Adam had the day before. He was wearing it when we got there. I was like, I need this shirt. I would. I definitely was like, dude, I want that. But especially it being long sleeve, and once Jim got it, I was like, well, we can't get the same shirt. Come on. Oh, because we didn't do that with the Thanks Killing shirt, that <laughs> other one. Listen, Jim, that shirt's going to get revealed. Don't ruin it. I mean. <laughs> And, of course, we will mention, you might have seen already on other videos, uh, or you will see on videos. You'll definitely see in the future. Dan was nice enough to give us, uh, he's got the new Black Console Wars Very shirts. nice shirt. They look awesome. He gave us a couple. So that was really awesome. Dan, if you're watching us, thanks again. Um, but I've said many times, I'm not the collector. If I buy anything, it's horror video games or something that really catches my eye. So all I looked at were horror video games. The two things I got 
where Resident Evil Survivor, this was one of the few Resident Evil games I've never even played at all. I know about it. I saw it. It was 20 bucks. I was like, you know what? That seems like a reasonable price because when I looked at it online, when we were doing this Resident Evil month, I was going to get it, but it was like in the 30s or 40s. And I was like, ah, it's not worth it because I know the game's going to suck. Uh, that was a no brainer. And then my son absolutely is obsessed with Monsters Inc. So Monsters Inc. for PS1, five bucks. I was like, I can't not get it. Like, it's right there next to Resident Evil Survivor. So those were just the two simple games other than the uh, square painter uh, drawing I saw. And I was good to go. That's all I needed to get. Yep. Jim bought more. Yeah, well, I didn't go crazy, crazy, though. No. So you can't respect- get your goddamn Vectrex. Respectably. I did not get the Vectrex or the 3DO or the Turbo Do or any of that shit. But... So, first game up is a game that you were actually so close to getting. Dude. I was like, if you wanted, buy it. I don't need it. Like, and if he didn't buy but it. But I said, if you weren't going to buy it, I yeah. was going to buy it. And and this is a game. Well, go ahead. You can show him and I'll explain. So, Kid Chameleon. So, I've said many times on this channel, when I grew up, my brother had Genesis. I had the Super NES. This was one game I bought myself. and Game in, s- game in box. No such manual. a fucking fun game. The basic premise is that you're this kid, and if, Jim, show the box one more time. Yeah. It's that atypical skater, motorcycle, you know, leather jacket, slick back hair, glasses. He puts on certain masks and becomes the version of them. So it's like a samurai. He wears a Jason Voorhees mask, and it's like uh, he's throwing axes. He wears a skull mask. He's shooting from a tank. A rhino mask. It's really interesting, kind of side-scrolling. Yeah, platformer. And you basically get all these different abilities. The soundtrack's really good. I'm sure it's a game we're definitely going to review now in the future. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's an excellent game. And I said for all of Jim's terrible Genesis games, this will be a good one. And it was 20 bucks, which actually isn't bad because yeah. I see a lot of stores around here that they were charging, like, at least 15 for the cart alone. So, yeah. cart and box for 20 I, I can live with that. Yeah. Next up. I approve that buy. So, next up is going to be... Again, in lieu with the Resident Evil that we do and how much we love it. Resident Evil 2, the N64 version. Which, this is kind of a crazy version because they somehow fit all the game onto this. Yeah. Now, the like the quality of the FMV scenes and stuff like that, like it's a little blurrier as you would expect. And the sound isn't as crisp, but we're talking about a cartridge here with like a fourth of the storage. So the fact that they got all the fit on here is a friggin' miracle. And where you bought your games and where we bought most of these... It was the same vendor, and their prices were all over the map. Like, some yeah. prices were really good, and some were outlandish. Like, they were selling, like, I get paid 50 for this, and it's complete, and it's a little beat up, but it's not too bad. And, like, it's tough. It, this became a game that people really started to buy for the N64. Yeah. So, finding it for 50 <clears throat> complete in box isn't that bad, really. No. And, but we're also talking about a table that had Robotron 64 complete for a hundred bucks, which is completely outlandish. Yeah. So I think finding that it almost seems like they have prices that they just never updated. Yeah. And that's one I'll tell you right now, like as much as I jokingly shit on the 64, like I get that. And I'm someone with my horror game obsession. I was like, God damn, I, that's a good buy. But yeah, 50 bucks. I was like, after I bought my show, I was like, yeah, I'm not spending 50 bucks on that. So that is another one I approve. And <laughs> although we've already done all of our resin, well, at this point, we've done almost all of our resin reviews. Yeah. I mean, we've talked about the 64 version. That's just a cool thing to have. Right. Like for, like, I'm an N64 guy, as we all obviously know. So yeah. obviously, that's one that I kind of have to have for the collection. Too. Yeah. So, next up, ClickoVision Games. I don't, I don't approve. Bit, 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 bit. Paid off $2 for it. Zaxxon. Arcade classic game. Good port of it for the system. Two bucks, how can you go wrong? I actually wanted to get Burger Time for it, too, but they had two carts there. One was 20 and one was 15 And I am not paying even 15 bucks for a ClickoVision game. I mean, the two only bucks. two bucks is, like, there's not many stuff that I wouldn't be like, oh. All right, two bucks, that's nothing. Right. That's the only thing I'm okay with that. And last up for the games is I anytime I go to too many games, it seems to be a tradition now. I have to get at least one game for the turbo. So I got Final Lap Twin. Good racing game, 20 bucks, complete in box. Doesn't have the outside cardboard deal, but I can live without that. 
fun, fun little racing game. Only racing game I had for the Turbo now. Hey, Jim. What? You're saying good little racing game. I bet I could stack up against every single physical copy of a racing game you own, and that's at the bottom. <laughs> Incorrect. Really? Uh, that you probably own, not. That you own. Probably not. I probably own some. You don't worse. own many good racing. You don't own many racing games. Period. I don't own that. Well, actually, mm. yeah, I own a lot. So that might not fall true for me. I'm just saying. God damn it, Jim. Look, Brian. To be let's be fair here. It's not the most, in your eyes, disappointing game. Oh, well, Turbo Collectors. I know they went. Oh yeah, it's a good get. Of course, it's a good Turbo like to- game. It, it's kind of like oh yeah, like you, you got a blowjob from her. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Hey, blowjob's a blowjob at the end of the day, Ryan. All right. Next up. This is something that you. So, already, last purchase. This is where I'm like, okay, 20 bucks. I spent that on a bad Resident Evil game, but one that is overpriced to begin with, and it's rare. Okay. He spent 20 bucks on an amazing game right there with Kid Chameleon. And then he did that goddamn Turbo game. So, now his decisions are they're taking a nosedive. And I'm like, ah, he'll level out. And what did you get next, Jim? Next up is the TurboTap for the TurboGrafx-16. So as I mentioned in a previous <clears throat> video that no one watched, the TurboGrafx-16 only came with one controller port. One of the many reasons it failed in the United States. Because who would want to play on the Turbo with you? Who wants to play the Turbo with me, Ryan? Who wants to play with me in the game? So TurboTap gives you up to five players. Yeah, how many controllers do you have, Jim? Currently, I have one. So what you're saying is you got a piece of equipment that you I'm going to be buying. Even... I'm going to be buying more controllers for it. Don't you worry. Okay, so best case scenario, me and you are going to play it. That's all we need. Yeah. So why do you need three more ports? Just in case. Just in case. You never what? know, right? Are you going to put out? How much is a turbo controller, Jim? Actually, I got to look it up. I don't know. It's probably like fifteen at this point. You think that's it for a decent one, not a third-party ship one? Nah, twenty-ish maybe. Okay, so you... And also, the extension cord part of it's pretty nice because the controllers have a short cord. So... This is, this is a nice tip. So what you're saying Dual is purpose. Dual purpose. Great buy. You need to put out another 80 bucks to get full use out of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Only so, so many games have that many things anyway. In case we I, get a bunch of people uh, together to play Bomberman on there. By the way, starting with that piece... This is the beginning of Jim's terrible decisions for this video. So he's <laughs> he's fucking nose diving. And I'm, I look at I him. I call it as providing content. This is where I'm egging him on. Get the Vectrex. Get the Vectrex. Get it. And, and okay, so at this point. Also, which I had not realized after the first day, I'm looking and I, I brought a certain amount. And the next day when I'm like looking and like going on the floor, I'm like, where'd like at least half my money go? That went towards booze the entire well, yeah. time, obviously. But at this and, point, let, let's also point out how much was that turbo thing? Uh, that was thirty, I believe. Okay, so fifty dollars worth of ter- terrible decisions have already been made. How dare you, sir? Fifty. Bucks. How dare you? Now this one, it's got a purpose, but I know you hate me for it. Hate myself a little bit. Fifteen dollars. Crash and burn. This monstrosity, right here. <sighs> this. Is I don't the- know if he's doing it near the near the mic. But listen to the cheapness of the plastic creaking. Plastic shouldn't... You hear that? Plastic should not creep, creak like that. But what is it for, Jim? Because I... This is the super action controller for the ColecoVision. Oh, my God. And this is for a certain sect of games that just have a control scheme that the normal ColecoVision controller couldn't handle. How many games, Jim? Throw a number out there. Five? <laughs> Hell, fine. More than five. All right, six. More than five. <laughs> <laughs> so, has a nice little stick up top. Has wait, wait, this wait, wait, wheel wait. over here, which uh, God knows what it does. Can you quiet down for a sec? Can you move that stick again? Yeah, I'm sure that'll work great. Nice little stick. Four, four action buttons over here for uh, multiple purposes. How this many, would have been great for when I did mousetrap. How many buttons are on the regular Coleco? You get two action buttons, and the keypad, and... The thummy stick. So, so there's two This basically un- comes with un- this need- basically comes with two more buttons and a wheel. That's what it comes with. And a better think- stick. Way better stick. What are the chances those two extra buttons are actually mapped to anything? Oh contra. For the games that it does, it is very much mapped to stuff. So those six Mouse Ma- mousetrap doing the walls, they're all color coded. This would have made that a hell of a lot easier. And the main reason I got this is we've only been donated so few games in the entire history of the page. So we have 
Mutant Football League, which we have to do eventually, that Todd gave us. And we got Super Action Baseball from the Retro Sports yep. Gamer. <clears throat> so this is the only way that we can play that. Don't act like if he didn't do that, you would not have considered buying it. Oh, if I didn't have that game, I wouldn't have bought this. I'm not buying it. It makes it a little better, but still terrible decision. Incorrect. But it's a better controller than a normal ColecoVision controller anyway. So. Would you say because that, World of uses. that system in general is not that good? Fantastic system. Jim, you've Victim re- of the video game crash. You've reviewed it, and it's not that good. It's pretty good. Damn We've good played games together. It's not that it's good. pretty damn good. It's because we used a crappier controller. Now that we have the superior controller, it just Jim, makes it all the better. I'll give you, here's, the only, here's the only leeway I'll give you on that statement. The Atari never existed. It'd be a pretty good system. Stack it up against the Atari. Way better graphics. I mean, games I know, are more complex. I know, I know River it's Raid, got War Games. I know River Raid sucks. War Games is on both of them, or River Raid's on both of them. <laughs> yeah, and I know River Raid on Atari sucks, and you hate it. But what I'm saying is, Sir. <laughs> what I'm saying is, stop buying stupid shit for systems that nobody cares about. I got a wheel. I don't know what the wheel does, but I got a wheel. What's amazing is, of all the stuff you got, you got <laughs> one <laughs> good game for. Let me finish this for. One good system. I believe that I got four great games from four amazing <laughs> systems. Uh, so, all right. The most questionable of purchases probably could have been the TurboTap, I'll say. All I'm saying is, for a little bit more money, if you didn't buy any of that shit, right. you could have a Vectrex. I could be mad at you about something else. <laughs> could at be least, mad at me about at least, at least I would respect it because you've talked about that fucking thing. So long that I'm like, just buy it at this point. Fuck. Look, Bri, you're making a risk when you spend that much money on a system like that. Where's with this? The Coleco wasn't far off, Jim. Pretty sure this is a home run right here, boy. This is a home run, buddy. <sighs> so, at the end of the day, we had a great time. Too many games. We can't thank Dan, Adam, everyone we met enough. Yep. Um, we can't wait to do it again. We may try to do other game conferences like this. or Yeah, both of us being dads, and we don't make money off YouTube, really. Yeah. It's not like we're going to be dropping everything to go out to these things. But I know there's one in North Jersey at, like, the end of like end of September, I think, that Dan also goes to. So maybe we'll try and crash that. But For sure. I mean, and like you said, Dan, I consider him a friend – like a good friend at this point. We just love hanging with him. So right now Dan's going, fuck no. He's like, God damn it. Stop getting me drunk. Like, Maybe Brian, not Jim. Fuck that guy. <laughs> Hold your pee. So if you ever been to too many games or you know anything about it, let us know below. And if you're going next year, we're definitely going to see you there. Yep. All right. So with that out of the way, let's talk about this beer. So this one, you know, obviously the big selling point is that it's supposed to taste like s'mores. This is the campfire stout. Yeah, so this was supposed to be, it is brewed with graham crackers, molasses, and natural flavors. Um, Significantly weaker than the previous one, 6.5%, which for a stout, that's a little bit low. That's pretty low for a stout. Yeah, which is what I typically, like all stouts I have are usually a bit higher. Um, But with that, I think it's safe to say this one was noticeably sweeter. It was sweeter. It was easier drinking. Yeah. Not like the first one was hard to drink, but this was just like, if you're not a style fan, you could down this easy. Yeah. And it the vanilla, which I guess is supposed to be the the uh, marshmallows, I did get a little bit of cinnamon, but there was a, I don't want to say more flavor than the first one, but the first one where it had that booziness, there was just a flavor profile that was there that was like, oh, this is like, it's kind of sweet. So if you're not a big fan of stouts and you're not looking to get too drunk, this is actually a pretty solid, you know, this is a bigger bottle. You won't regret drinking it. Yeah. Let's put it, it that way. One person drinking this, you could easily go through this yourself. Like the first beer, drinking that whole can by yourself, you'd be like, hmm, this, now nah, you'll go through it easily. So pretty solid beer. All right. So the, so the last three topics, we're going to start with one for Jim. That we skipped earlier. So I believe this is this is a quickie too. I believe we've done one of these. Did we do this one, one of these before? What a gym rage! Yeah, <laughs> I think it's becoming a somewhat of a bit. All right, because so I'm just angry at everything all the time. Yeah, Jim is is quite angry at stuff. <laughs> I'm angry at my bladder for making me miss an after party. So go ahead, Jim. I'll let you. So very simple backstory to this. I can't wait. So 
after work, it's before the holiday. We the office lets out early, stuff like that. People are like, no, oh, let's go, let's go to Pizzeria Uno. Let's all go have a beer, whatever. Cool, fine. So we go there, and of course, as you know from listening to this podcast, I'm not the best with words or speech. So we're there, and I'm talking to the bar. Well, I'm not even talking to the bartender. I'm ordering a drink, and I go, "Can I them give me an IPA?" And they're like, which one do you want? I'm like, uh. I'm like, which ones do you have? So they go through the list, and I'm like, oh, let me get the Lagunitis. So she goes. I didn't know you said that. Yeah. So she goes, the what? I'm like, the, the Lagunitis one. Give me that one. She's like, oh, you mean the Lagunitis? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> you asshole. You know what the fuck I just ordered? You goddamn land whale what other one it has those letters in it it's spelled that way nothing could possibly be confused for it it's because i didn't say the t's nothing it, nothing it's not like any of the other things were close nothing even started with an l Lagunitis. for the brands but yes i said Lagunitis instead of Lagunitis. can i ask you one one question go ahead because i know how you speak correct did you actually say Lagunitis? I said Lagunitis. Lagunitis. All right. So here's the deal. Mind I, you, nothing else started even with an L. No, no. I, I, I. I'll, but I'll, it was the, it was the. Oh, you mean the Lagunitis? <laughs> but here, here's you, the, you day shift Uno working bitch. But here, here's the problem, Jim. <clears throat> you also, you don't say it. You don't say it with your chest. You're, you're, doing, you're doing something in. Yeah, I've seen you in social situations. You're. uh I can be a little quiet. You're reserved. You're quiet. You're, you're socially awkward. You don't always you your mouth. You know, you 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 blur words. And I'm a mumbler. I'm a mumbler. All I'm saying is, so you already had that. You're fucking up terribly, and it bothers me because Lagunitas, we run the site. Well, <laughs> and it's one of our favorites. I talked about something, something else. We've had it together. We've reviewed plenty it plenty of Formally. times. Uh, there's been plenty of we've other had plenty ones. of Lagunitas. The Maximus, like. You've had that beer, so You've that had brown I'm, sugar. I, if yeah, if you were anyone else, I'd probably defend you really heavily, like ah oh, that bitch. But it's you, <laughs> so you me. should know better. Number one, I've been with you and I've seen how you can I get and, and you don't speak the clearest. So to her, she probably caught the end of it and was like, "Itis, the fuck you talking?" She probably just heard the "Go get a lug noise," and she's like, "Wait, what?" The, like, right? And she's like, I, I don't know what the fuck you're saying. Where she, if she heard Edis, you'd be like, Oh yeah, the Lagunitas. So, possible. So all I'm Very saying is, possible. is this is this rage maybe a little misplaced, and maybe you need to step your game up with your speaking. <laughs> is it a fair question? Do you want to be caught? Do you want to pretend to be a cop? <laughs> Am I just a guy with a badge and a gun <laughs> sitting there thinking I'm a cop? I, it's it's a simple question, Jim. There, there could be some blame to be put on the other side. Being from Philly, we always get the looks. The further out I travel for vacation or work, and I still say water. I say it. I don't think about it. That's how I say it. I know it's water. However, water. Yeah. I say water. Like, it doesn't sound natural say any other way. And I've been in places where... We say we say towel. We don't say towel. Where I've been under 21 and clearly looked under 21... And you're at a restaurant, and she says, like, oh, like, do you want to start with something to drink? And I say, yeah, can I have some water? And people are, like, like looking at me like I just said, like, can I have fucking sand? Like, no, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, I'm saying water, and I didn't even know why she's looking at me. She's like, oh, did you mean water? I'm like, yeah, bitch. Like, what what, what do you think I mean? This is a little different, Jim, because all the factors. I don't think so. All the I factors. I don't think so. Especially after the guy who pees in a bush and then takes an Uber 10 minutes away. I can't defend you on this, Jim. You know, and I wanted to defend you because when you first started, I'm like, oh man, yeah, she was just probably being stuck up. And I'm like, yeah, but I've been with Jim when he orders shit. So it is fucking confusing. And that, <laughs> poor, and that poor woman is just trying to make a living. And this asshole comes, I get not good at this. She's like, are you fucking, are you trying to say you're Maximus from fucking Gladiator? Like, what are you saying? <laughs> well, Brian, let's just let's just take it even a step further. What if there is something wrong with me? I mean, there's obviously something, many things wrong with me. Let's just say there is something 
you know, maybe there's some developmental thing there. Well, it's funny. What's just, it, what, if, what if she was just being a bitch, though? What what if I was a little bit a little bit off, I and can, then she started giving me the same attitude? That's fine living in that what if, but until it's documented, it's funny that you fuck up all the time. <laughs> so for now, I can keep making fun of you. You show me paperwork, and I'll pat you on the head. All right? <laughs> I'll, I'll pat you on the head, he says. <laughs> until that time, learn how to speak. Don't get mad at the goddamn waitress because she can't understand your goddamn talk. <laughs> Look, I'm I'm in my mid thirties. I'm not changing anymore. <laughs> oh, we know <laughs> things are they're just I, getting worse and worse. I've tried to sculpt you, and the fact that once again, if it was a beer you never had, I would have even given you like, ah, oh, he's got leeway. He's never heard of that beer. You've had multiple, Sinitas. multiple, and you've actually, I don't know, you haven't ordered it. But once again, because we've sat here and drank it, I'm like, oh, I love this. Sad, drank, talked about. Yes. So, get your shit together. <laughs> God damn it, Jim. Add that to Jim's terrible decisions. Damn it. Fuck Jim's rage. <laughs> can't win this week. So, yeah, I can't wait for next Jim's yeah. rage. The unjustifiable rage as Jim. Yeah. Fuck. The her. thing that I blame on society and not myself. Yeah. Son of a bitch. That's why there's loot boxes. <laughs> People like you, Jim, you fuck up. Oh, it's my money. Oh, it's my money. Oh, it's my money. <sighs> All right. The last two topics... Uh, the first one is our recurring bit, which is better. I did this one specifically for Jim. I figured it would pull at his heartstrings, and I wanted to see. Yeah, great. See, see if this would affect him. There's probably, I think, I think there's a very clear answer. But Jim, you know, with his nostalgia, so which is better, the Switch or the N64? It's the Switch. Damn it, that was too easy. See, I was <laughs> it's hope- a switch. I was hoping there was some, you know, if you take all aspects, the multiplayer. Look, I look, I love the N sixty four. I defend it more than most people. Okay, it's the switch. Come on now. But is there anything about the N sixty four you would would you say it was more creative? Would you say like Ca- uh, couch couch multiplayer will never be more fun than you had on the N sixty four? How about console exclusives? I mean. Is it like there's a lot of games that I love on the N64, but most of them are not the best of whatever series it's in outside of maybe Star Fox. Like Star Fox some never got better than 64. Ocarina of Time the best. Ocarina of Time as well. I don't. I'm saying some people do. A lot of people yeah. do. Yeah. Or even like Super Mario 64. A lot of people will say that that's one of their favorites. Yeah. Even though with the 3Ds, I guess more say either Galaxy or Odyssey now, and then you have the 2D people who hate Super Mario 64. Um, X never gets the love as being the best. It's either the original or it's GX. So once again, though, X is a great game and very impressive for the system. But and let let's be clear, I do agree with you. Switch is better. Right but now, if I, if I'm doing the devil's advocate, because I thought you might have defended this. Here, here's the thing, like like the N64, it has the best library of say wrestling games of all time. Best as an overall system for couch multiplayer. Like, you can't beat Smash, Mario Party, Mario Kart, GoldenEye, Perfect Dark, all those kind of games. If you're a huge fan of the collectathon kind of platformers, then yeah. Super Mario, Banjo-Kazooie, Conquer, all that. Okay, not that I'm saying it's right to do this, but if you took away the ease of playing Switch on the go, if it was a plugged into the wall, would you feel the same? It might. It would be closer. Okay. I'd so- still maybe say Switch just because... Even though you're getting dumbed down versions, you're still getting like the AAA titles that across like all systems. Which, anytime you had for like ninety percent of the time, if you had a cross platform game on the N sixty four, that was always the worst version. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but <clears throat> now the first party titles like because, a Nintendo system are great. Well, so that's what I'm thinking though. But like, think about the Switch's exclusives. You can't say Breath of the Wild because that was on the Wii U. You, you could say Mario. Splatoon yeah, 2. You got wait, Odyssey, wait, wait, actually, Splatoon was, 2. Did that come out on the Wii U first? No. Okay, so Splatoon, the Splatoon 1 was Wii U. Okay. What else is exclusive? Um, Mario Kart 8 wasn't. No, Mario Kart 8 was not because it's just a deluxe version. Um, like Super Mario Maker 2. Um, you got Octopath, Octopath Traveler for the RPG people. So, I mean, and, and obviously it's not fully fair because we're still 
I don't want to say infancy of the Switch, but it's so early, so they have time to come out with more. Ex- but what I'm saying is, like, if you're trying to be objective and you think about the games that came out exclusively for the N64 and you talk legacy, like, you know, the Legend of Zelda, like I said, like you said, arguably one of the best. The Mario game, arguably one of the best. Right. Start at Mario Kart, start at Smash Brothers. Right. It, well, it the, didn't start at Mario Kart, but it started Mario Party oh, yeah, and Smash yeah, Brothers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, my bad. Um, you, it, you had the rare games that people still talk about. You had the wrestling games people still talk yeah, about. Goldeneye, like, arguably, it, it's not the first first person shooter, but it started this wave of multiplayer. And it's the first on a console to really take off. Yeah, so it's like, uh, is it that crazy to say? Historically, it may, is it going to be remembered better? Well, you know, the, the, and obviously, once again, it's tough because Switch is so new. It, it's tough because Switch is so new, and because <laughs> the controller, most people hate the N64 controller, so they just wipe it off for that. It does suck. <laughs> the video, just the video, the quality of like the visuals. It's rough. That they, gen, they're that rough. And PS gen. They suffer the, 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 fi- worst. the fifth gen her- suffers the worst, especially since the N64 can't natively do RGB Trying out. Trying to so. do that goddamn 3D. It fucked a lot up. Right. And then force feeding it. I mean, it's got a ton of great exclusive titles on there, especially if you dig, like I always say, deeper into the J- Japanese side of it. Was that the smallest library for a Nintendo console? It's one of the smallest. Was it that or GameCube? I think, like, the N64, the GameCube, and the Wii U are maybe all around the same amount. Okay. Like, the 300 some ish mark, three to 400 games. That's it? I thought, for some reason, I thought N64 was, like, 700. No, I think it's only, like, three, three huh. to four in between there. Like I said, I, I did this jokingly because I thought you'd fight for the N64 more, but now, like, I'm trying to be, like, well... Like and once you, again, like you said, if you take the portability factor away from it... From the Switch. From the Switch, that makes it can make it, especially right now, a closer argument. Yeah. Now, by the end of the Switch, is like, like the Switch's library is so huge right now, It's though. huge, but, like... And it, it's a, but it's a lot of retreads of old indie games. That's, like, and that's the point, is, like, I you can't... If I, if like, you most of my s- games, most of my games I own for... Are shit that you've already owned or you've played. It's either stuff I've already owned or it's all indie games. Yeah. Like, the only big titles I have on the Switch are... Mario Odyssey, Fire Emblem Warriors, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, which I had, Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U. Um, That's what I'm saying. And everything else has either come out on everything else or it's an indie title. So Switch, it's like you can't deny the portability is... If you if you're doing pros of a system, that's its highest mark. Right. It's the it's the portability and it's just it's the convenience of it. Because there's nothing other the portability even could be debatable because this is Nintendo's like I'm going to a a portable console. There's nothing that unique, whereas the N64, as much as I give it shit, there was a lot other more unique shit introduced oh, with it. Yeah, there's a ton of games on it that like you just never see anywhere else anyway. But you would say still Switch. I'd still probably say Switch. Okay. Yeah. Because I think like even though the N64 has so much unique to it, and it's a lot of unique that I love, Yeah. I just think the overall quality of the library, especially on the Switch right now, is just better. Yeah. Yeah, of course. It would be the only way it's comparable is, like I said, you take away the mobility and if you did strictly exclusivity. Right. Like if you were like anything only exclusive to Switch. Oh, if you take exclusivity out of it, the Switch has like 30 games. That's what I was going to say. It's yeah. not much. So, okay. Damn. Thought I would get you better with that. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so, our final topic, and this goes with a story we just told overrated, underrated, game cons. No, I I know we talked about E3 specifically, but now we went to too many games, and obviously we're talking about these are ones. We've been there. Now we went there as drunk assholes, and, <laughs> which we will always do from yeah, now on, <clears throat> for sure. But having gone there, so you know what the month, the weekend pass was like fifty five bucks, right? The yeah, one day was like forty. Weekend was fifty five. Yeah. Uh no, no. One day was like thirty five. I wasn't. Yeah, that's what. Whatever. But the VIP, I do you remember what that was? That eighty or something? Uh, there was like a seventy-five dollar one that got you like a T-shirt and a poster, and maybe full VIP was like eighty or ninety or something. Okay. I forget. So knowing that price point, knowing what we just saw, and we're just our examples from just too many games because we talked about E3 and shit like that. I mean, is it overrated or underrated? It's almost weird because I would say smaller ones, like too many games. 
I would call underrated. And I still, like, I can't see myself ever wanting to go to an E3 or a Comic-Con or shit like that. I just think it's too busy. It's too much going on. I don't want to wait in a three-hour line to see anything. Yeah. Like, I don't care enough. So, like, I could almost, without having ever been there, obviously, and probably never will be there. Unless somehow this takes off, which, come on. But Subscribe. <laughs> please. <laughs> feed my E-fame. But, <laughs> of which there's none. But... It, it say we ever go, it might be a really cool thing, and maybe it'll change my mind. But right now, I just can't see myself ever even wanting to go there. Where too many games, when I first started seeing it, like the first two years, I had things come up where I couldn't go, and I was really disappointed. Yeah. So when I could finally start going, I was like, oh, this is fun. And then when we really did it right this year, it's like, this is it's a must-do, I think. So... I think it really depends on the, on the level of the con. Thing. Yeah. So to Jim's point, the smaller one, not knowing how many people fully attend it, and I don't even want to take a guess. Right. The thing is, last year, and we were commenting on this year too many games, the thing we felt was weird was they expanded the area by a huge amount by opening up this secondary area. Where it was they kind had, of empty. They, well, yeah, it was like they had all these PCs out. But they weren't all playing together. I think there were some, some were, some weren't. They had the Smash tournament, and they run these interesting tournaments. Like last year was Tecmo Super Bowl. This year was I don't remember. Other than the Smash tournament, there was another one in the main video game like area. Uh, but last year the arcades were a lot better. Yeah. Last year there was a lot more like co-op, like shooters or this or that. This year it was like. Uh, there was like uh, ten of them. The, ar- the arcade floor is weird this year. Yeah, this year, and there was a lot more microcomputers on, like, because they'll set yes. up consoles and TVs for you to sit down and play on. Yeah, and last year was a shitload of like Saturns and PS ones and stuff like that. This year, this year there was a ton of like, like, like I sat down on the. Hold on, let me even see if I can bring up the picture. Yeah, but, but yeah, like to Jim's point, so there was a lot of that. So it's yeah, it's okay a chance to say that that you played that. And they had the big, like, DJ booth area, which is, they're, like, trying to make it a rave, but it's, like, during the day. It's, it's very odd. Um, the booths themselves, we just said what we bought. <clears throat> we didn't see anything that was, like, this is killer deals. So you weren't making away, like, a bandit if you go to these things, at least not in our opinion. Yeah, like, seeing other people's videos, like, there were booths where, like, remember that one booth with all those big Tupperware tubs of yeah. sold games? Apparently, a lot of them were five bucks each for whatever you could find in there. Okay. So, I don't know if that became a thing just on Sunday or if that was the whole time. Cause that, that, I wish I'd seen that because that would be a thing that would be more with the money for like filling out a collection. And just like, you know, uh, flea market, that's always the case. You wait till right before someone's about to leave and they're like, fuck, man, I just need to unload. And you can work deals with people. Whereas when we went, it was still like, nah, they're still in a swing. It was early enough in Sunday. Like, I think if we were there like 6 o'clock on Sunday or whatever. They'd be like, just take it. Yeah. Even when we were walking around, at one point, guys were going out like, Two, everything's $2 in this one bin. Yeah. Now you look in, it's all sports titles. Yeah, it's, it's still, all yeah, it's all crap and stuff like that, but it's still. And and when you meet cool uh, vendors like, you know, our buddy Square Painter, like you meet some of them and it's like, that's cool. If you ever wanted to get to meet some of your favorite YouTubers, to us, though, that's always an interesting thing because they have a whole, like, you didn't have to pay extra. The, the it, audit- was, it was weird this year, too, with the YouTubers because it was in, like, this back part of it. Yeah. Like, last year, like, the YouTubers took up, like, they were on the main floor. And they were but spread they were out. All, they were more spread out, but it was also, like, all kind of in a line. Yeah. Where, like, it was more game vendors again. And then the YouTubers were, like, tucked in a corner. So that's where, like... Uh, AVGN, Pat the NES Punk, Scott the Waz, all them, uh, Epic Rap Battles, and all those Bogey, people. All those guys. Bogey, yeah, they were all in the back there. They were like almost like weirdly, not like sequestered, I'd say, but yeah. like it was just a weird setup. Now, did you see <clears throat> there was a whole schedule set up for like autograph times? Yeah. I don't know if you had to pay extra for them. That I don't know. That's the only thing at that point I'm kind of like, oh, it's kind of weird. Like, and. We'll never be anywhere near as many subscribers, but like, you're not a celebrity. Like, you know, it's kind of weird. Well, that's sh- why they call it e-celebrity. Like, I know, I know. But it's where it's like for as big as you are, like even, even someone like PewDiePie, for as big as he is, well, he, he's the biggest. He is the biggest on YouTube. Yeah. But you talk to a normie about him, they might have heard of him. Yeah. 
But I'm saying when you compare him who has 95 million subscribers to someone who has a million, you right. can't – like the numbers are so crazy that, yeah, I, I, I don't care who I meet unless they're a gamer. If I say AVGN, they'll be like, huh? But right, if I right. – do pe- people who especially are parents or something, I say PewDiePie, they're like, oh, yeah, isn't he that like gamer YouTube? So like, oh, yeah, my kid way, watches them. Yeah, yeah, way more casual. But it's <sighs> – I don't know. It's a very interesting thing. That's why I can't put the nail on the head of is it overrated? Is it underrated? Last year, I would say underrated for sure. This year, I was like, eh, for the price. Well, the fact that we did it right this year, but I'd say like if you're going there for the like, if you're the, no, if I'm, you're going there to buy games, overrated. That this is my point. Like if you're not going there to meet up with friends for a specific thing, yeah. If you're not going there to just meet people, yeah. Like, is the price worth it? No, because then you still spend ten dollars on a pizza slice. You still spend stupid money on food. You spend like the bathroom like isn't well stocked. Like there's things I'm like. I will say the bathrooms were a little less horrific this year. Well, yeah. Because last year, the smells that were coming out of them. <laughs> but but oh my god. So, as someone who now we want to go just because we want to talk with people we know, I'll always do that. But if I was a consumer and I was going to that thing, I'd feel like, eh, I don't know if I'm really getting my money's worth. So it's tough to say. I might I, Just to go against Jim, I'll say it's overrated. All right. And I'll say, depending on the con, but I'll say for, say, too many games, underrated. Hmm. So if you've ever been to any of them or you have thoughts on bigger ones, smaller ones, let us know. We would love to hear them. Um, yeah, like I fucked up my night and I still said it was a great time. <laughs> Yeah, but you're talking about the whole. I'm strictly the two just, or three just hours the events. Were at the yeah. con. Yeah, right. Not everything. I else mean, I mean, it. I mean, yeah. Last year, I would have said for what we got out of it, probably overrated. And that's all I'm talking about. I'm yeah, talking so about the all-encompassing night, because not everyone is going to have the kind of night we had. Yeah, probably true. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the last beer we finished, Jim fucked up again. Of course, I did. I always do. Um, I wanted to keep us with stouts, and this was the Weyerbacher Teeny. Uh, if you follow this channel, we love Weyerbacher. And I've actually talked about this beer on a few live streams, I believe. Belgian-style Imperial Ale, once again, 11.8%. So it is a strong son of a bitch. So we went from another 10 or 11 to a 6.5 to di- up to 11 again. But it's one of the smaller beers, and it was my last one. Uh, Jim, what do you think? It was good. Like the second I took the first sip, especially after the campfire one, you're like, oh, it was just like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. there's the mouthfeel right there. Yep. There's the uh, the mouth flavor. A little bit more burn to it because it's stronger. Yeah, it's got the more burn, but it wasn't like overly boozy or anything. It still had like the boozy aftertaste with you know alcohol content like that. You're gonna get that. Yeah. But um, I don't know if it's because I've had some at this point, but I was like, it was good. It had a definitely good mouthfeel, good flavor. Of all the beers Weyerbacher does, this is one that gets talked about the least. Uh, they do a lot of great Belgian style beers. Now, what's interesting when you say Belgian style Imperial, Imperial implies it typically goes to Russian or American style stouts, which is like a double stout, which is why it's so strong. There aren't really many, if any, Belgian style ones. So there's nothing uniquely Belgian about this other than possibly some of the ingredients used. So it's not like the flavor. You're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's definitely Belgium. I like it. Uh, It's, once again, it kind of falls by the wayside with everything else they make. But if you're a fan of stouts, if you're in a PA, or if you can get a hold of this, it's a strong one, and you should probably give it a try. But just know that you're probably going to limit yourself to about two bottles of that before you're really like, whoo yeah, and I'm like, again, I'm not a big stout guy, but that's one I'll drink again, definitely. Yeah. So with that, guys, as always, we really appreciate if you're listening to us on iTunes, if you're watching us on YouTube, if you can, take a moment, subscribe, hit like, leave us some comments. Just let leave us a review on think. iTunes. Yeah, whatever you can do, we really appreciate everyone who supports us and watches us. And if you ever have topics you want to hear us talk about, Email, Twitter, YouTube. Patreon.com slash drink a beer and play a game. For as little as $2, you can give us a question that we will answer. Absolutely. Absolutely. God. Jim's better at that than I am. Aha. So with that, guys. Cheers. Cheers.